In this video, I show you how to speed paint Blitz Bowl Season 2 miniatures. Before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. You make this channel what it is. And I wanted to give a special shout out to those that Bob picked for the GGGG. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for February of 2021, there were a lot of GGGGs. Gare H received the Orta Station All-In Pledge. Stuart D received the Spaceship Graveyard All-In Pledge. Trace H received a $100 gift card. AJ received the Spaceship Graveyard Printed and Painted Terrain. Dennis M and Richard M both received the True Well Common Pledge. Rob M received the Riddle Root Pledge and Michael H. received the Zombicide Pledge. Check out my Patreon page to see what this month's GGGG is. Blitz Bowl is from Games Workshop and is a Barnes & Noble exclusive. I don't even know if they sell this in other countries. Here in the United States, you can't buy Blitz Bowl in some of the normal places you would buy Games Workshop products, but can only buy it at Barnes & Noble. And Blitz Bowl is a watered down simplified version of Blood Bowl, which I'm really grateful for because I've looked at Blood Bowl rules before and I think it's too complicated. The streamlined version with a smaller model count is perfect for my purposes. And the base box comes with the humans as well as the dwarves. And again, this is season two and season one, the base box has the humans as well as the orcs, which I wish I had the orcs in season two, since I don't like the dwarven faction that much, but I'll take what I can receive. And this was a little bit under $50. And I also picked up the undead Blitz Bowl team here, just because I like the model so much. And there's a bunch of other factions. Now, one of the cool things about Blitz Bowl season two is that they included all of the stat cards for all of these expansions that they came out with in season one. I'm so grateful that Games Workshop did that rather than making me pay for all of the upgrade cards. So good on you Games Workshop for including that in this base box. I also magnetized all of the footballs because using the little peg and leaving a hole in the base, I just didn't like that aesthetically. So I just love the way that you can simply put these magnets onto the balls as well as the bases and they stay on there pretty tightly. So that worked out super well. I use primarily contrast colors for most of my painting. The only exception is here with the undead. Their armor, I did not use contrast colors, but instead chose black with a purple highlighting and I'll show you that. But otherwise these were super fast to paint up and I think that they turned out really well. I also used my method of Zenithal highlighting, which I use Montana Gold Spray Can. If you wanna check out that video, look here. But if you don't wanna do Zenithal highlighting, I think actually this looks fine if you just spray paint everything white and have a base undercoat of white. I think that works because overall with jerseys, you want them to be sort of bright. And in some of these spots, I wish I would have just gone with the base white rather than the Zenithal highlighting but overall i think you can get good effects either way so let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial it is a little bit long since i'm going through three different teams and you can fast forward check out the timestamps below if you want to go to a specific team and at the end of the video you'll also see each of these teams on a turntable if you wanted to see more details on that so you can skip to the end as well otherwise let's go ahead and dive right in we're gonna start off with some skin and this is Wildwood for darker skin tones here. I'm 
And the trick with contrast colors is to make sure you only are coloring the parts that is that color because you want to keep the white undercoating. Do the footballs as well. We're going to use Gilliman Flesh for all of the lighter skin tones. And this is going to be the case as well on the dwarves. Black Templar is going to be for the strapping as well as the shoes. And there's also some black parts underneath the padding. We're gonna use some red here. And just I just followed the color scheme on the box. And grab some plate mail metal or any kind of silver and you're gonna do the grill on the helmets as well as any of the weaponry and spikes that are on these guys. We'll grab some Nuln oil and go over all of the silver just to give it a little bit of shading. And then Achillean green is what we're going to use for the dwarves. And I probably should have just chosen a lighter gray or a dark gray for all of the clothes and then the Achillean green for the armor just to give it two tones. But I wanted to rush through the dwarves again. They're not my favorite faction, so I wanted to get them done as quickly as possible. And it's tricky to be working around all of the gems that are on their armbands, as well as some of the striping. And I did use quite a bit so that there is some pooling and shading. I'm gonna grab some orange and do some of the crest this hair on the crest of this main guy but you can pick whatever colors that you want for the dwarves beards and I chose orange just for this guy but you can also add it to some of the other dwarves as well it's sort of up to you what color you want to put for their um, for their beards here is ironed in yellow and I'm going back through and doing all of the other parts of the armor and the trimming. You can do gold if you want to use a metallic color. Uh, here's Basilicanum Gray, and that gives sort of a grayish tone to a beard. This is optional. You can use black if you want a darker color, but again, you can choose whatever colors that you want. Here's Skeleton Horde or Seraphim Sepia. They're both the same. I made a contrast video between the two, seeing what how they're different from one another. But here I'm just doing one of the dwarves beards with this lighter color. Here's Gorgranta fur. This is another excellent color with a reddish tint to it. And here's snake bite leather, another favorite of mine. And I'm using it for the strapping. You can also use Wildwood if you want a darker brown for the strapping. And I'm going back to the red to do all of the gems. So here I want you to see that the undead are actually a lot more challenging to put together and they don't have slots. So you have to cover the base. I just used regular tape, cellophane tape, and then spray painted it black. And I already put in the magnet in the base. And I'm grabbing some skeleton hoard and doing all of the bones first. 
And again, you can use Seraphim Sepia instead if you want. They're basically the same color. Although the Skeleton Horde is a little bit thicker. Here's Plague Bearer Flesh, which works super well for the skin of the zombies. I just really like this color a lot. And then I chose to use blue instead of that purple color because I'm opting to make all of the armor a purplish tint. So I'm using blue instead, but you can use purple for the skin tone if you want. And this is Army Painter shade because I don't really like the contrast color blue because it's too dark. Here's some Wildwood that I'm gonna paint up the boots, some of the straps, and the loincloths. Sort of up to you uh, what color you want to do these. Snake bite leather again. And I'm doing all the straps on the mummy. It is a little bit darker than what is shown on the box, but I like this color a lot. And I also use this color for strapping on some of the other models too. Gore Grunt of Fur, again, just to provide some variation after I used the snake bite leather on some of the strapping, I'm choosing to use Gore Grunt of Fur for the boots as well as his pants. And then I'm using black and I always use just cheap craft paint for black and white because I use so much of it. And I haven't really noticed a, you know, that big of a qualitative difference. So I'm doing all of the armor as well as some of the belting on the undead. The reason why I'm not using the contrast color black is because I want a solid black color. I'm grabbing some of the red to do the helmet, and this is only on a couple of the skeletons where this is needed. Not a whole lot of red otherwise. I have Imperial Purple, but any dark purple will work. And I'm doing the beginnings of sort of outlining or highlighting and being fairly generous on putting this thickly on the edges of the armor over the black. And it's going to be pretty dark because of the black base. But uh, this is the first layer and we're going to lighten it up to get even finer details. So don't worry about being uh, generous. I have amethyst purple, but you can just go ahead and add white to your regular purple. And this is where you just want to do some edge highlighting. I'm not great at doing edge highlighting. But these results are good enough for me. It is a little bit tricky. Fortunately, the armor does have a lot of dings and um, pock marks, which makes it uh, easier to do some of the edge highlighting along those pock marks. Again, my silver and just the, all of the metal parts. You just want to paint up silver and then put on gnome oil over that to provide shading, just like we did with the other models. And don't forget the bar across the helmet. To magnetize balls, I just use regular cellophane tape and I cut it up a little bit and place it over the hole in the base. And I have to use an X-Acto knife to make sure to cut off any of the tape that's sticking over the edge so that it's smoother. And then I take a two millimeter drill and I just use a hand vise to drill into it. 
And the magnets I use, there's a link in the descriptions below for my Amazon affiliate account. And I'm using a two millimeter, I think by two millimeter, but check the link. And then I can just push fit it in there. I don't actually need to glue it at all. So once I get it in, I actually use a pair of pliers to push it in further. And I keep a stack of the magnets to keep polarity straight and then I stick it in the hole so that it goes right up against the tape like that and I peel off one of the magnets so that it's in the hole and then I just put a drop of super glue inside of the hole don't put too much and if you want you can use a toothpick to make sure that the glue is going all the way in and then wait for it to dry. I use texture astro granite here and we'll be painting this forest green for the humans, leaving it gray for the dwarves and then painting it brown for the undead. And you do need to be generous with it because you don't want the slot to show up and there are some holes that you need to fill up. And then here I'm just doing some striping. I just cut a piece of masking tape to create a stripe and just spot it on, spot the white on. And you don't want to do a solid line color. You want it to be splotchy like this. I got this decal sheet off of eBay for $7. That's including the shipping. And I'm not sure what this, these decals are from, but you can pick whatever decals you want. And I just chose to use this insignia. I don't even know if it's for a specific team, but decided to use it on the humans. And I have Microsol, links in the descriptions below. And this just helps melt the transfer a little bit so that it conforms to the shape, especially the curved parts on the shoulder pad. It just fits it a little bit better. Now you want to be careful using this stuff because you can tear the transfer. So just be careful. And that's what it looks like. There you have it. Make sure to like and subscribe as I'm coming out with a lot of videos talking about the hobbying aspect of gaming as well as games that are coming on. Also click on the link in the descriptions below to check out my Patreon page to see what the GGGG is for this month of March of 2021. We'll see you next time.